Welcome to another message from C3 Mumbai. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. I'm going to be preaching from um, uh, Acts chapter 6 verses 1 through to 7. I'm going to be talking about a guy called Stephen. Um, if you haven't read the book of Acts, you should. It's a great book. What it is, is it's, it's the book straight after what happened when Jesus rose again and ascended to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit, who we still now have. We have God present on earth in the form of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, this gets confusing whenever I say that because it sets off this whole uh, question of the Trinity, God, Father, and the Son, which, who knows, it's confusing. Uh, don't think about it too much, you'll get more confused. But God is three in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we now live in the age of the Holy Spirit. So now that we're in the age of the Holy Spirit, what was birthed in the age of the Holy Spirit was the church, okay, which is this. It all started with a little, little group of people in a, in a country and it spread from there all over the world. And I just want to let you know, in case you don't know this already, you probably know this already, it was not a state in the U.S., okay? It, it wasn't North Carolina, it wasn't Pensacola, it was not, you know, Chicago or New York or Perth or, or Sydney, Australia for that matter. It was in the Middle East, in a place called Palestine, in Jerusalem, okay? I, I, just, I just love how people have made out uh, the whole idea of following Jesus as to being a Western idea when it started in the East. <laughs> it's just weird. I was, anyway, I'm not going to get offensive but because uh, I, I, I can very easily say things that could be offensive and I really don't want to offend anyone. Not that I'm trying to be offensive, it's just, you know, sometimes you can come across offensive. But I just think it's sad how religion has made out this whole idea that, you know, if your religion is this, then you're that culture. And if your religion is that, then you're this culture. If you read the Bible, it's not what it's all about. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. When you read it, you're like, how did people come up with the idea that to be a Christian, you know, Christian, that you have to eat beef, that you have to drink alcohol, that you have to be poor, that you have to be from... Uh, from Goa, you know, I'm nothing against Goa, I'm not trying to be offensive, I love Goan people, they're just going everywhere, but I'm back, <laughs> good, 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 you know, it's not about that, it's about this guy called Jesus, who changed history, he changed everything. The whole reason we're here is, is not so that we can recolonize India um, into being some different culture. I'm telling you, it's really not. I, I just want to tell some people about Jesus. Uh, man, if some people can hear about Jesus, and if, if they want to follow him like I do, they're going to experience the same love that I've experienced. And if they don't want to follow him, then good for you. And it, and it doesn't mean, you know, like this whole thing of like, well, if I become this follower of Jesus, then I'm going to have to like give up my culture. Says who? You won't find that here. Nowhere where it said there's no scripture that says, he that shall be a follower of Jesus shall give up their culture. In fact, what Jesus actually did is he went into culture and he became a part of that culture. You even see Paul doing it after Jesus. Anyway, I'm just waffling on. I'm not preaching what I'm supposed to be preaching. I'm just excited to be back. I'm excited to be back in my church. I went to like all these different churches while I was away and every weekend I was in, even on one weekend I was in two different churches. Let me tell you something. I love my church. And I just want to say this. I just want to say this. Um, I was bragging about you to everyone. I was just telling you, you, everyone about how an amazing church I have. I was just telling story after story because God has been so faithful to this church. I mean, look around you. A few years ago, this didn't exist. Church in Mahalakshmi, we're the only one, man. There's nothing else going on around here. I mean, apart from a few other little ones. They're around. But look what God has done. This didn't exist a few years ago. I just love talking about you guys. Uh, 
It's awesome. I'm going to preach from the book of Acts, chapter 6. As I was saying, Jesus had come, he had left the Holy Spirit, and this was what had happened. The church began to grow. But who knows that when the church grows, also comes problems. Um, (laughs) If you come into our church and think that you're not going to walk into some conflict, um, let me just, uh, before you get uh, surprised at conflict, I'm just going to let you know that you're going to walk into conflict. There is some conflict around. Okay, you can't put two people in a room and uh, not have some sort of conflict. I mean, I think it's hilarious. You know, marriage is awesome. Who loves marriage? Who wants to be married one day? Okay, you don't have to put it in your hand. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Gaurav, I saw your hand up. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, oh, marriage is amazing. It's the best. But oh, the fights. Woof. Yeah. I mean, they're amazing too. You know? And, and we, 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 it's so funny, whatever, whenever I, we disciple uh, people who are about to get married, we, we try to help them understand that it's not about that marriage day. It's about making it afterwards. That's what it's about. <laughs> I mean, the marriage day is just like, you know, the little cherry on the cake. That's the day you get to enjoy. And after that, it's hard. It's difficult. It's not easy. It's amazing. <laughs> God's there and you have some amazing moments, but it will be the most trial that you've ever faced because you're with this person all the time. And let me tell you something, in church it's the same. God throws us into community and we can look around and go, oh wow, look at this amazing church. You might be here for the first time. Wow, look at this amazing, look at all these people. Let me tell you something. To get here, we've survived some fights. Did you know that? (laughs) I'm telling you. We've We've survived some fights. There's been some conflict. I've had some conflict with some of the crew here. Rochelle, why are you laughing so much? It's making me nervous. Do we need to pray for you or something? Just, we've had some conflict. Oh, it's not funny. Anyway. Anyway, I'm just... Rochelle's got a good sense of humor, so I can make fun of her. But this, the reason I brought this up is because right here we see some conflict. In the book of Acts, everything's awesome. People are getting saved left, right, and center. They're getting baptized. They're getting delivered of demons. There's miracles happening. There's people like stuff happening. You know, it was so crazy that people were literally selling their houses and their property so that they could give to the poor in the church so that everybody could have something. Isn't that cool? I mean, this is like a move of God. People are joining it in the droves. It's like thousands and thousands of people. On the first day the Holy Spirit comes, 3,000 people get saved like that. I've been praying for that day in this church. I'm like, come on, Lord, I want to let that happen. But <laughs> let me tell you something. It went thousands and thousands and thousands after that, and they spread out, but there was conflict, okay? There was conflict. In those days, if you can put the scripture up in verse 1, in those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenistic Jews among them, complained complained what people complain in church yes the answer is yes against the hebraic jews okay so you got two cultures right you got you got the hellenistic jews i'm not going to go on to explain what they are but they're two different kind of cultures yeah let's let's say you've got the the uh the the Gujarat, good good Jews, can I say that? Is that all right? The good Jews, and you've got some Brahmins, okay? Right? You got, uh, okay. Maharashtians, okay, you got some good Jews and Maharashtians, okay? Right? And uh, because they're widows, so they both have widows within their cultures. Now, they complain against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So there was something unfair that was happening, and it was a racial problem. Racism in the church? You betcha. Welcome to the church. All the church are hypocrites. Yes, I know, that's why we're here. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God, in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit. Everybody say, full of the Spirit. Spirit. And wisdom. Say wisdom. wisdom. Okay. We will turn this responsibility. What's the responsibility? 
The distribu distribution of food, I nearly messed that word up, I nearly said distribution. The distribution of food. In order for them to distribute food fairly among this, these different people groups that were present, I mean, look across this church. You're going to see all sorts of different people groups here. I, this has been one of the biggest lessons for me coming and being an outsider coming in and joining into a culture here in India. I'll, I'll admit to you, for a little while before I lived here, I thought all Indians were the same. I'm sorry, I'm just admitting that to you. So I came in with a one-size-fits-all kind of church environment sort of thinking. And uh, I'm like, okay, I just need to do this and that. And I realized, hold on a second, that person doesn't get along with that person because they're from a different culture. But they're all Indians. Like, what's going on here? I mean, and I, I began, it made me begin to question the whole idea of like, okay, what is an Indian? Define an Indian to me. I've come to the conclusion that India, actually, I don't mean to be political, actually should have been more like Europe. It should have been split up. I think that's my, that's my thing because you, there's just so many different people groups here. Okay, so it's, it's interesting how this Bible scripture kind of lines up with what happens in our church environments. A lot of the issues that we have, you find, will actually be cultural issues. So, and that's what happened right here. What was it that solved it? Well, there needed to be some people who were full of the Spirit. And there needed to be some people that were full of faith to take on the responsibility to do church well. Okay? This proposal... Verse 5, please the whole group. They chose Stephen. A man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, that's a cool name, Timon, Parmesan cheese, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert from Judaism. You got my joke? They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and lay their hands on them. I'm going to be doing that at the end of this service. I want you to hear this. Verse 7. So the word of God spread. spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. So they've gone from just increasing and God adding numbers to them to increasing rapidly. God added to what they were doing and a large number. Now here comes in the, the clincher. I mean, it was just Jews getting saved. It was just Gentiles getting saved. But now the priests from Judaism start coming in and getting saved. God starts bringing them in. Isn't it interesting? First thing I want to tell you is this. In order to sign up at the back there, what we need is people full of the Spirit and in faith. The Spirit and in faith. Yes, there is going to be conflict in our church. And see, what we have to understand is, if we don't do what we're doing up the end here, and organizing things and putting a bit of structure in, what's going to happen is it's just going to be a whole massive conflict and mess. But the church and leadership needs to actually move ahead to put things in place so that we can actually begin to move forward. Okay, that's what we're doing today. But I want you to know something that when they put it together, back then, in verse 3, it says, Brothers and sisters, we need to choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom, and we will turn this responsibility over to them. Responsibility. <sighs> what we don't want to have happen here it's put together a whole lot of rosters and we have people sign up for stuff today and, you know, I want to be involved and all of that sort of stuff. But they don't understand that they need to be full of the Spirit. They need to be full of faith because what they're walking into is not just helping Ryan and Rachel out. You know, uh, this is a major shift that has to happen, I believe, in the church in North India, okay? A lot of people come into church with the mindset of the, the kind of religious um, activities that they've been a part of before that, whatever religious activities. A general religious activity will look like you go to some sort of place where there is some sort of altar and there's some sort of candles there or some sort of thing there and there is a priest. 
Okay? Yeah, there's the priest. He's there. And that priest does things for you. Right? So you ask the priest, listen, I need some prayers. I'm just going to move these because I feel like I'm going to play soccer with them accidentally. I, 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 I need some prayer for my business. It's hit some trouble. Um, and he gives you some stuff to do, whatever that thing is to do. And he prays on your behalf. And then you go home. And you might give him some sort of <whistles> for his service. A little bit of bakshish. Okay? There you are. And depending how wealthy you are and how much favor you want from God, it's dependent on how much you give. That's the general. Who knows what I'm talking about? I just want to say this. If you think that the church that we are building here is like that, um, that's not how it is. The church that we're building here is different. We're trying to build it according to this, the Bible. A church according, according to the Bible is an all-in, all-active uh, organization. Okay? It's an all-in, all-active organization. Yes, there are, and, and I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit for you. Yes, there is a need for people like myself and Rachel. And as the church grows, we will employ other pastors and do things like that. But, 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 but it's not about the priests doing everything. It's actually about the church being active. Okay? Okay? You okay with that? The reason I said that is because I don't want you to sign up the back there thinking that you're doing me a favor by, because I'm the priest and you're doing the favor for the priest, which might bring I have some favor from God. That's not why you're signing up. You're signing up because God sees you as a person that needs to be full of the Spirit. You're signing up because you are a person that is full of the Spirit, full of faith. And God wants to shed some of the responsibility of His kingdom into your hands. I don't know if you know what, I, that, that, what that means. But God wants you to have some responsibility in this church. In fact, He sees you. The Bible in other areas talks about the church as being a, a, a brick and mortar structure. That each person is a brick that builds the foundation of the church or builds the church. That's what you are. So if you, if you think, I mean, you never see a brick saying, I'm just doing you a favor, Mr. Building. I'm just going to walk on out whenever I want. That's not how it works. It takes responsibility. And responsibility means commitment. The C word, commitment. A little bit scared of that word because at times this is what the commitment is going to mean. <sighs> you ready for me to go there a little bit? Yeah. So you sign up at the back there and you've committed to it and it's responsibility and you go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. But every Saturday night, I'm going out till like six in the morning. And every Sunday morning, when it's that time to get up, oh man, I'm tired, but they'll understand. It's all good. They'll understand. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. What's going to happen to the church? You're going to be tired all the time. You ain't going to be full of the Spirit. You ain't going to be full of faith. You are, you, you're just going to feel like asleep. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's what happens when you stay up all night, right? So uh, the reason I say that is because it, it does take commitment for this responsibility. On a Saturday night, I have to go to bed early. I haven't had a proper Saturday night when I'm preaching for years and years and years. It's, it's, the, it's the part of my job. I, I get stressed about it and I think, oh, and I have, to, I have to arrange my whole schedule around this responsibility. But I want you to understand something. God is ready and waiting to to actually help you and give you some of that responsibility as well. And I'm going to show you what happened with Stephen in a moment. Because Stephen was one of the guys who got chosen. Stephen. He was full of faith, full of the Spirit of God. He was ready to handle this responsibility of helping build the church and um, I forgot to give the scripture because I was a little rushed this, this morning with all of my responsibilities but 
In verse 8 of chapter 6, if it doesn't come up there, I'm just listening to my, to my reading here. It might come up. I don't know how magical C. Joe's fingers are when Rochelle's not there. You never know. If, yeah, I'm just going to move on. Okay, now, Stephen, a, full of, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. What was, what was Stephen, what was his responsibility? Waiting on tables. Why was he waiting on tables? Because all of these widows weren't getting fed, and, and the guys who were there, whose responsibility was to bring the word, see, my responsibility for you, and Rachel's responsibility for you, is to bring the word. Why is that? Because the Bible, what we have here in our hands, is, is the map book for, for, for us moving ahead. Uh, I, I am a leader. I have no problem with saying that I'm a leader. But let me tell you something. If I'm a leader that's leading you in the path that's not the Bible, please stop following me. Don't follow me. Okay? If I'm not leading you in the direction that the Bible tells us to go, don't follow me. You, I, I give you a total, like, jump-off card. You can jump off the bus and go to another church. Okay? Because I, I need, my whole like, priority is to be leading people into the Word of God. Leading people how to, how to read the Word of God. Leading people how to lead. Leading people how to know what the, what the presence of God is. And there's so much that I need to lead people in. And, and the way I do that is through this. So I need to be studying the Word of God. So they, were, they, they, they shared the responsibility of waiting on the tables, not because it was a, some sort of sub-job. But they actually, they actually gave it to people who were responsible because it was actually a key to their church succeeding. Because let me tell you something, okay? You've got to hear this. Jesus himself was rich, yet he made himself poor in order for us to be rich in spirit. The whole value of the kingdom is about those who have enough serving those who don't yet have it. <coughs> Let me tell you something. <coughs> I'm coughing <coughs> because I haven't preached for a few. Let me tell you something. <coughs> there are people who are coming into this church who are in spiritual poverty. They are in spiritual poverty. They need God. They have been searching all of their lives, giving all of the sacrifices, doing everything they can in order to get God to look at them. The message of the Word of God is going to set them free. And what we do all together is we bring in the presence of God into this room so that those who are lost could find Him. Now, I need to be a person that is honing my skills and, and, and reading the Word and getting in the presence of God so that I can be the best at doing that for that moment. But there is so much more than that in the presence of God. I mean, today, look at what happened today. I mean, there was like that amazing drummer. And then, you know, we've got Mary Ann, we've got Rohan, we've got Shaker when he's here, but he's uh, doing a shoot at the moment for the next couple of weeks. We've got Rochelle and C. Joe, and then we've got... Man, there was like an army of volunteers that came in this morning at 10 o'clock. They all just came in. They all got jobs. At the moment right now, there's, there's, there's my, two of my children are up there. And, uh, you know, there's some other kids up there that are getting looked after and ministered to so that, you know, so that they can actually learn the Bible now. There is so much happening here. And, and for us to grow, we need more help. But it's all about people finding Christ. It's all about the lost finding Jesus. But I just want to come back to Stephen. Because they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, and they chose some other guys. But here's Stephen, whose responsibility was to wait on tables, but he was moving in signs and wonders. Now, this is saying something about the order of God, because listen, I'm going to talk to the Christians. If you're not a Christian here, it's okay. You can nudge the person next to you that bought you and say, this is for you. Okay? Why are you nudging? He's not a Christian yet? Okay. Anyway. 
You know, I've seen lots of Christians who want to move in signs and wonders, but who are not willing to take on the responsibility in serving in a local church. The order of God is serve, commit to a local church, then move in your signs and wonders. Why? Why? Why, why, why? Because if you're not prepared to serve in a local church, there's something there in your character that needs to be adjusted. The question is, why wouldn't you serve? Why wouldn't you serve? When Christ came and served you so that you could have the salvation that he has freely given, why would you not serve a fellow human being that is beside you? Why not? Why would you not commit to his church that he gave his life to? You understand? The order of God is about servanthood. Church is all about responsibility. And the pathway to leadership, and you know what? For every one of you, every one of you here, God has actually put leadership on you. Whether you like it or not, there is leadership in the kingdom of God. Because when, when, when such and such steps in who hasn't been in Christ, who, who's never met Christ before, who's searching, who's, who needs, who's, needs answers, and you, you smile at them because you know how much power there is in you being friendly, you've led them somewhere. You could have led them into one or two places. You could have either led them to a place where you're like, you just look through them like everybody does in Bombay. Who knows what I'm talking about? People just look through you here. It's no slide on Bombay, but it's just how it is. You know, they're like, you're not important, I'm not looking at you. Man. No, but you, you engage. You smile at them. Say, hey, my name's such and such. So good to see you here. You've led them somewhere. You've, you've, you've set the culture for the room. You know, and some of us say, oh, I'm too insecure to do that. I don't, I, can't, I don't like looking and giving eye contact. Well, God wants to actually heal that of you. But the way he's going to do that is as you engage and commit to what he has for you. There is a responsibility of leadership in the church and it starts in servanthood. It starts at the ground floor because that's where Jesus started. That's what God is all about. He is about reality. He isn't about pie in the sky. He's about reality. Ground floor, here's Jesus. And here's Stephen who has a responsibility to wait on tables. What's your responsibility? If you don't have one yet, it's time to sign up. It's time to sign up. You want to move in signs and wonders? Let me tell you something. That is all there for you. But understand the order that God has. I mean, look at Stephen. Verse 8. Man, full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. And you know, the thing about Stephen is uh, this is a great honor for him, but it's kind of a little bit dark. But he was the first one to be martyred after Jesus. So effective was his work that they were totally afraid of him. Here's a guy who was waiting on tables in his local church. Became one of the greatest disciples that ever walked the, world, that ever walked the earth. Who I'm telling you right now would have a place of honor in heaven. It all started with servanthood. That's why we're doing it today. It's a responsibility. So if you're, not full of, if you're not full of the Spirit, maybe you don't even know what that means. What does it mean to be full of the Spirit? What do you mean? Full of like, uh, full of the whiskey spirit? It's not what it means. Okay, it's not what it means. Full of the Spirit of God. How do I get full of the Spirit of God? Well, you invite Him in. You invite Him in. The whole sacrifice of Christ and everything He did was so that the Spirit could come and fill everyone's heart for those who would accept Him. But there is something that you have to understand about this being full with the Spirit. It's not becoming more aware of the Spirit that's already in you. You become more aware of the Spirit that's already in you, you're going to find how it's just like the Spirit with us in me, the Spirit that's in us, that's not of God, is unfortunately corrupt with sin. We need God to come in and fill us. Yeah. It's not becoming more aware of what's in, but actually more aware of what's out. And that is the presence of God who wants to come and enter you externally and then become an internal reality that actually leads us on. 
God wants you to be full of the Spirit, but it takes this one thing, to accept Him completely and exclusively because He is complete and exclusive and there is no other apart from Him. That's what the Bible says. And if that is offensive to you and if that was like, what did He just say? I would just encourage you and challenge you to seek it out for yourself and challenge every belief that you've been raised and challenge everything that you've actually been taught and actually see the truth in it. Seek it out. Be a student of the Bible. Be a student of whatever else you want, but understand the Bible and begin to ask Jesus, are you really the way? C3 Mumbai is a church in the heart of India's commercial capital where a diverse group of people brought together to worship God and to pass on the hope of salvation by grace that we freely received. For more information about C3 Mumbai, please visit our website c3mumbai.com or visit our Facebook page. Follow us on Instagram or tweet us on our handle at C3 Mumbai. Hey, it's Ryan here. If you enjoyed this message and you live in Mumbai, we would love to meet you in person. Why don't you come along 11.30 a.m. Studio 10 at Famous Studios in Mahalakshmi. 